Today we'll see how to set up the development environment for CS520. It's pretty straightforward stuff, but please do pay attention to details. Be a little careful now and you'll save yourself lots of headache later. The first thing we need is PostgreSQL. There's a separate guide for installing and using PostgreSQL on the class website here. Please check that one out if you haven't done so already. Then, of course, we'll need Java, and in particular, JDK 7 or above. You'll probably already have Java on your computer from some other classes. I suggest that you check to make sure that A, your JDK is 7 or above, and B, you don't have multiple versions of Java on your computer which tends to cause really weird problems. If you are on Windows, just go to Control Panel and uh, under Uninstall Programs, check if you already have JDK on your computer. And in my case, you can see that I do have JDK. It's Java SE Development Kit 8 here, so I'm OK. There are usually two entries in there. The other entry is for the Java Runtime Environment, or JRE. And uh, if you only have JRE, you do want to install JDK as well. And uh, both of them should be of the same version. Again, if you have multiple versions, or if you have uh, older, a version older than 7, uh, you should uninstall them and then download from uh, Oracle's website and reinstall the latest version. So once we have the Java stuff, and uh, then we need Tomcat 7, which will be our application server. The reason we want version 7 instead of the latest version 8 is that most server setups out there these days still use version 7. We want to make sure that our applications work flawlessly on 7. And uh, go to the Tomcat website to download. Why it's not connecting? So I'm connected to the internet. And then 7. OK. So it's here. OK, so uh, as you can see, there are several distributions and many packages here. And the one we want is the zip one under the core distribution. So download that file. And uh, I have already downloaded it here. And then simply unzip it to a local directory. Okay, so now I have Tomcat 7 there. Let's go back. And then we need to download the Eclipse IDE. If you go to the download page, again, you can see that there are a bunch of different distributions. We want the one that says Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. Make sure that you get the right one. It should be the Java EE developers, and then uh, either the 32-bit or the 64-bit package, depending on your uh, Windows uh, version. Make sure that you get the right one, uh, not the one for Java developers in particular. There were um, cases in the past that uh, uh, some students got the wrong version, and uh, uh, it will cause lots of lots of trouble down the road. So make sure that you get the Java EE developer and the right version for your um, operating system. OK, and uh, again, I have already downloaded mine and uh, simply unzip it to a local folder. OK, so now it's 
unzipped. My computer is kind of slow and sometimes certain operations will take a, a long time. Feel free to fast forward through those things in the future. Okay, now let's start Eclipse. Simply double click on eclipse.exe. Okay. Okay, so when you use Eclipse for the first time, it will ask for a workspace folder, which will be used to store all your projects. I'm going to create one under Courses CS520. So this one is going to be used just for CS520 projects. And uh, it's done here. Okay, check this one. Okay. Okay. So now we have Eclipse running here and uh, then we need to install a few additional plugins. So the first plugin is called Subclips. To install a plugin, go to Help, Install New Software, and then Add, and uh, then the location of the plugin, and give it a name, which doesn't really matter, but let's call it Subclips. So for the Subclips, Subclips plugin, you need to choose the right component. For us, we want the one that says Subclips, Subversion Client Adapter, and then Subversion Java HL Native Library Adapter. Only the three. Leave others and check, and then next. This step again usually takes a little while. Okay, not as bad as I thought. Okay, and then finish. Okay, so that's one plugin done and uh, three more to go. The second one is called M2E Subclips. Let's grab this one. Okay, I think I know why my Eclipse is slower than usual. It's because I'm recording the, the desktop and uh, it takes up lots of CPU resources and my computer is pretty slow to begin with. So uh, if you want, you can skip ahead a little bit in the video. Uh, basically, we're going to install two more plugins. But after that, we'll do a little bit customization of the IDE, and you want to, uh, you may want to watch that part. So let's install this one. This one is test mg. Okay, so one last plugin. That's the lock viewer. So this plugin has two features. We want the second one, which has a higher version number.
Okay, finally. And uh, now let's try it and see if it actually works. So let's check out some sample code and run them. We go to perspective and uh, open the SVN repository exploring. The sample code repository is sum.calstateLA.eu.cs520. And uh, we'll check out the review project. So check out as Maven project. And just click finish. And uh, notice that at the lower right corner it shows the progress of some background background processes. Let's go back to Java E perspective and uh, click here to make sure all the background processes are finished. Okay, so now we have a project here and uh, we can see the source code and so on. And uh, let's run it. So run as run on server. Remember, we are going to use Apache Tomcat 7. So pick Apache Tomcat 7 next and uh, go to the folder where we just unzipped our uh, Tomcat server, which is this one, and then finish. Okay, and uh, hello world works at 10, 20, 10 and 20, 30. So everything, everything works. Now, um, there's one more thing I want to show is how to customize a little bit uh, about uh, Eclipse. Eclipse is a very customizable IDE, and uh, there are lots of ways you can change how it looks and works. Uh, for example, if you look at the uh, toolbar here, there are a bunch of buttons, and uh, usually I don't use most of those bu uh, buttons. So what I can do is I can say uh, customize perspective, and then I can check uncheck a bunch of uh, button groups. For, for example, I don't want to have the log viewer buttons shown there. And uh, the debug group, launch group, I want that. Java EE group, no. Search is useful. Browser is useful. Web Services Explorer is not so much. Neither is navigation and uh, help. So now it looks much cleaner, and uh, I can then drag group and rearrange them a little bit. So browser is here, launch is here. And uh, then I can go to preferences and then change some preferences and options. For example, uh, one thing I typically would do is to change some text editor settings. And in particular, I want to show the print margin, which shows me if my uh, if a line of code is too long. And uh, also, for example, in XML editor, I tend to like to use spaces for indentation, and then preserve white space in PC data tag. And uh, then another pretty used for customization is for the subversion subclips display. As you can see, it's kind of annoying that uh, for each file, it will display the file name and then the version number, the version, the timestamp uh, of that version and who changed that version. So uh, it's kind of distracting to have all those displayed there. And uh, here we can find the option by type SVN 
and uh, these are subversion related options click on label decoration and then text you can see that you can customize how the file file names will be displayed here we can for example remove revision date and order so uh, now it looks much cleaner here and uh, one more thing I usually would do is to change the Java formatter. Formatter is uh, the function that you can use to automatic format your Java code in a certain way. And uh, Eclipse has a built-in formatter. But I tend to like my code to look uh, slightly differently. For example, I would usually have my opening bracket on a separate line instead of uh, on the same line as a method name and so on. So uh, I actually had my own formatter set, uh, configuration saved from a different Eclipse setup. So uh, we can import that here. And uh, that one is, where is it? Yeah, it's called formatter save my song. So do that and uh, so this one is my formatter and uh, you can actually see that uh, now it changes the opening uh, brace to uh, a different line and so on so uh, this is uh, how you can play with uh, source code formatting and uh, so this is it I hope you will enjoy uh, coding using Eclipse